Hello and welcome to Searchlights at Home. I hope you've had a good few days since we saw Rachel on Thursday and that you're all keeping well and safe and that you're all getting on well with your families indoors. Now I've just finished my lunch and I've been wondering, I wonder what your favourite meal is. If you were going to be away from your friends and family for a while and you were going to have a meal together before you went away, I wonder what meal you would choose. Our true story from the Bible today is about a meal that Jesus had with his disciples the night before he died on the cross. And we're going to think about that in a minute. But before we do that, I've got a little quiz for you. Now I've chosen some characters that most of them, you will know them quite well, I think. And you've got to try and guess what their favourite meal is. OK, so the first one is Peter Rabbit. What do you think his favourite food is? Because he breaks into Mr McGregor's garden, doesn't he, and steals the vegetables. His favourite vegetables are radishes. I don't know if you got that, that's quite hard, isn't it? The next person I've chosen is Peppa Pig. I wonder who knows what Peppa Pig's favourite meal is. Well, it's spaghetti and jelly, and I hope, I hope not together on the same plate. Now, the next person I've chosen, you may or may not have heard of. This is somebody that I've read about in a book and his name is Six Dinner Sid. What do you, what, have a guess at what you think his favourite food may be, even if you don't know who he is. As soon as I tell you, I think you might know. Six Dinner Sid is a cat and he's a bit of a naughty cat because he's not content just with being fed in his own home, but he goes into five other people's homes every day. So he gets six dinners a day. So I'm guessing his favourite food is cat food. OK, now what about the mouse in the Gruffalo? What do you think he says his favourite food is right near the end of the book? You might remember. He says it to scare the Gruffalo away. That might give you a bit of a reminder. He says that his favourite food is Gruffalo crumble. I wonder if you remembered that. What about penguins? What do you think penguins' favourite food is? It's quite easy, isn't it? That's right, fish. Different types of fish. Now, here's another one that's a bit more tricky, but have a guess. Now, I've recently bought a book and it's called The Boy, The Mole, The Fox and The Horse. And we don't know what anybody's favourite food is in there, apart from the mole. So have a guess at what you think the mole's favourite food might be. It's probably not going to be what you think it might be. Well, the mole mentions cake quite a lot of times throughout the book. So I'm guessing his favourite food is cake. OK, here's one that you might know again. What about Pumba from The Lion King? He's the warthog who lives with Timon. And Pumba's favourite food are dung beetles. Not sure I fancy those myself. Not sure Simba enjoyed them very much either, did he, the first time he had them. Here's our final character. And this one's Mickey Mouse. What do you think Mickey Mouse's favourite food is? Well, I didn't know this either, so I had to look it up. And apparently, it's hot dogs. Again, maybe not what you might think. But well done for having a go at those. It's time for us to have a think about the meal that Jesus had with his disciples now. In the Bible, it's called the Last Supper. And this meal was part of a special meal that lots of people were having at the same time as Jesus and his disciples. Jesus and his friends were in Jerusalem, in Israel, and throughout the whole country of Israel, all of the Jewish people were celebrating the feast of the Passover. Now, this was a special meal that Jews ate every year 
and still do, to remember a time in their history, hundreds of years before, when God had rescued the Jewish people who were living in Egypt. Now they needed rescuing because the Pharaoh there, the Egyptian king, had taken all of the Jewish people as slaves and he was making them work ridiculously hard, far too hard, and they were living a terrible life because they had to do everything that Pharaoh told them to, and they were completely miserable. So God rescued them. He took them out of the country of Egypt, and he gave them a land of their own to live in, where they were free again. And God said to his people when he did this to them, for them, I want you to remember this every year by eating a special meal. So even though Jesus was living as a man in our world over a thousand years after this special rescue, the Jewish people were still celebrating it and remembering it. And even today, over 3,000 years after God's special rescue, the Jewish people throughout the world continue to remember God's rescue of their people by celebrating the Feast of the Passover because it's such an important part of their history. So when you hear me talking about the Passover at the beginning of our Explore the Bible, this was the meal that all of the Jews, including Jesus and his disciples, were celebrating and getting ready for at that time. This is what the Bible says, and I'm reading from the book of Mark, and it's chapter 14 and verses 12 up to 26, if you want to look, at, look in your own Bible for it. Jesus' disciples asked him, where do you want us to go and prepare the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples telling them, go into the city and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Now it would have been a busy city, but this man would have been easy to find and identify because it was quite unusual in those days for a man to be carrying a jar of water. That was usually something the women would have done. This is what Jesus said next. Follow him. Say to the owner of the house he enters, the teacher, that's Jesus, the teacher asks, where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs that's all ready for us. Get our meal ready there. The disciples left, went into the city and found things just as Jesus had told them. So they prepared the Passover. When evening came, Jesus arrived with the twelve. That's his twelve friends, his twelve disciples. While they were reclining at the table eating. Now in those days, the table would have been quite, um, quite low to the ground. So people, rather than sitting at chairs at the table, would have laid down on their side and sort of propped themselves up on their elbow. And that's how they would have eaten their meals together. So if you want to lay down on your side and prop yourself up on your elbow while I read the rest of this part of the Bible, then you can, if you like, to imagine a bit more what it might have been like to have been there with Jesus. So while they were reclining at the table eating, Jesus said, I tell you the truth, one of you will betray me. Now, if we betray somebody, it means that rather than being their friend and being kind and loving towards someone, we turn against them, we become like their enemy and we might do or say horrible things to them. We might even do something deliberately to get them into trouble with other people. And Jesus knew that that was going to happen to him. One of his disciples, one of his friends was going to leave that room just after they would finished their meal and go and find the Roman soldiers so that they could come and arrest Jesus and eventually kill him the next day. So Jesus had said, one of you will betray me. And this really upset all of the disciples and made them really sad. And one by one, they said to Jesus, surely not I. But Jesus said, it's true. One of you that sits around this table with me is going to betray me. And because Jesus knew what was going to happen to him, that the very next day, the Roman soldiers would kill him on the cross. The thing that Jesus did next 
was a really special way that he gave his disciples and his followers to remember him when he wasn't going to be with them anymore. This is what he did. While they were eating, now remember they were eating that Passover meal. So all of the different foods that were on the table, there were certain foods that people ate for their Passover meal. And each one of those foods would have been a different way of remembering part of that special rescue that God had performed for his people hundreds of years before. So while they were eating, Jesus took bread, gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take it, this is my body. Then he took the cup, gave thanks and offered it to them and they all drank from it. This is my blood, which has been promised, which will be poured out for many to forgive their sins. And then one of the other books of the Bible that records Jesus's last meal with his disciples also says this. Every time you eat bread and drink wine together in this way, remember me. And then the last thing that Jesus said might seem a bit strange when you hear me read it in just a moment, but we will talk about what it means a bit later on. This is what he said. I tell you the truth. I will not drink of the wine again until I drink it anew in the kingdom of God. And when they had sung a hymn, when they had sung a song, they went out to the Mount of Olives. So this was an especially important meal for Jesus and his disciples. Firstly, they were looking back and remembering God's amazing rescue of his people over a thousand years before. And secondly, Jesus was looking ahead to his death that he knew would happen the next day. and He was giving his disciples and all the other people who believed in him a special way to remember him when he was no longer with them anymore. I've got a little diagram here that might be helpful for us. We've got Jesus's Last Supper in the middle there, looking back to God's rescue of his people there and looking ahead to Jesus's death. And today, over 2000 years after that Last Supper that Jesus had with his disciples, where they shared the bread and wine together that were a symbol of Jesus's body and his blood, this particular meal is still really important to people who believe and trust in Jesus. We call these people Christians. Christians today still do as Jesus told his disciples to, and they share bread and wine together. And just as Jesus used that meal to look back and remember something, as well as looking ahead to something, Christians use the times that they share bread and wine together as a time to look back and remember something, as well as looking forward and looking ahead to something as well. For Christians today, it's a way of looking back and remembering that Jesus died on the cross so that our sins can be forgiven by God and our friendship that is spoiled by sin can be made right again. But I wonder what Christians today are looking ahead to each time they share bread and wine together. Well, the Bible tells us that one day Jesus is going to come back into our world again in a way that everyone can see him. He's going to perform a rescue and rescue all those people that believe Jesus died to take our sins away and have asked God to forgive them. And Jesus will perform this rescue by making a new heaven and a new earth where there is only life and happiness and good things and no death or sadness or sin. And all the people that believe and trust in Jesus will live there together with God forever. And sometimes the Bible uses the picture of a really special meal, a feast even, to give us an idea of just what this will be like. And when Jesus said at his last meal with his disciples, I won't drink this again until I drink it in the kingdom of God, Jesus meant that one day he will share a meal again, this time with all those people who believe and trust in him in a new world where there is only happiness and good and joy. And I've got another little diagram here that might help us to remember that. So this is what people today are 
doing when they share bread and wine together. This time they're looking back to Jesus's death and everything it means for them. And they're looking forward, they're looking ahead to Jesus's new heaven and new earth where they will share a meal with Jesus together and live with God forever in the new world that Jesus brings. So Jesus used this meal with his disciples to look back at God's rescue of his people and ahead to his death. Christians today share bread and wine to look back at and remember Jesus's death on the cross that rescues them from their sin and to look ahead to the time when Jesus will come back and make a new world where those who believe and trust in him will live with him forever. Let's have a think about that for a moment as we say a prayer together. Join in with the prayer drill and a big amen at the end if you'd like to. One, two, three. Dear God, we thank you for this wonderful way you have given us to remember Jesus's death on the cross. Thank you that when Jesus had this meal himself, when he shared this bread and wine with his disciples, he knew that his death was coming the very next day. And yet he loves us so much that he did that willingly for us. And Lord, we thank you that we have this reminder of Jesus's death and how it reminds us that Jesus died so that you will forgive our sins when you ask us to. And we thank you too that it reminds us to look ahead to the time when you will come back, when you will bring in a new heaven and a new earth and you will eat another meal with all the people who believe and trust in you yeah, in God's kingdom and we will be together forever. We thank you so much for this and thank you that we have that to look forward to if we believe and trust in you. Amen. Well, it's time for us to do our craft now. And I thought that since today we've been thinking about Jesus' Last Supper as a way of looking back and remembering Jesus' death on the cross and a way for Christians to look forward and remember the time uh, when they will be in heaven eating a meal again with Jesus, I thought we would make some binoculars. So you might just like to pause the screen and uh, go and collect a few bits and pieces. We don't need too much for this. So if you've got some toilet rolls, empty toilet rolls at home, you need two of those to make your binoculars. But if you haven't got any of those or haven't got enough of those, you can just get a piece of A4 paper. I've cut this in half, but just an A4 paper will do. And then some scissors, some sellotape, some pens or pencils or something to colour. If you've got things to decorate that you want to stick on, then you can collect those as well. And maybe um, a piece of wool or string or something else that you can use for um, to, to put the binoculars around your neck like that. So all I've done with my uh, toilet roll holders is I've uh, decorated them a little bit with some of my colours. You want to stick things on them to make those a bit more exciting than you can. If you haven't got your toilet roll, using your A4 piece of paper, if you just fold it in half and then cut it, I've already done that with mine, and then you can roll, roll them up and put a little bit of sellotape on there. And then that's just as good as a toilet roll tube, okay? So if you haven't got the tube, then you can use that instead. And what I thought we would do is on one of these sides of the binoculars, we would write on there, remember me, because that's what Jesus said to his disciples to do when they shared wine and bread together. There we are. And on the other one, I thought we would write, look for me, to remind us that Jesus is one day going to come back and 
those are the people that believe and trust in him and look forward to that meal in heaven with him. So we've got remember me and look for me. And then what I'm going to do, and I should have found the end of my sellotape before I started filming. Here we are. I'm just going to take those together at each end. I'll put that on there so that I don't lose the end again. And I'm going to turn this round so that I've got my writing on the outside. So I've got remember me there and look for me there. And then I'm just going to tape them together at each end with a bit of tape there. Now, if you've got a stapler at home, you might be able to staple them together. That might be a little bit more sturdy. There we are. So we've got those together like that with my look for me and remember me. And then I'm just going to put my little bit of wool, I'm going to measure where I want it to come. There we are, that will be long enough, I think. And then I'm going to cut that off. And then I'm going to just use my tape again. And I'm just going to put that inside there and take that in there. And I'm going to do the same on the other side. So I'm just going to poke the end inside that tube there. And I'm going to put the tape on the inside there. And then I'm all ready. I can put my binoculars on. And I can look through them. I can see what I can find. And they're a reminder that Jesus' Last Supper was a time to look back as well as a time to look forward for those that believe and trust in Jesus. Now, it's quite a simple craft today, but I have got one more thing that you might like to do. What I thought you might like to do, because lots of you have been sending in your uh, photographs of different things you've been doing. So I thought today you might like to collect up some bits and take a photograph of what you think the Last Supper might have looked like. So you might like to collect a cloth and put it on the floor. You might be able to find some plates um, and some glasses, as long as you're grown up, say it's OK. And you might be able to make a jug of juice to put on the table. And if you've got some bread as well, you might like to put that on your plates and then maybe lay down on your side, propping yourself up on your elbow, reclining around the table, showing us uh, a little idea of what it might have been like at Jesus's Last Supper. Well, that's the end of our Searchlights at Home for today. I hope you've really, really enjoyed it. And don't forget to look out again on our um, YouTube channel Great Clacton Parish on Thursday and you should find Rachel on there doing the next Searchlights at Home session for you. But for now it's goodbye from me and I look forward to seeing you again next time. Bye!